In this video, you're going to discover 10 ways for you to know if you're really pursuing the best product idea to bring to market. I always say execution is where the value is. However, every project has to start with the idea, and it's really critical that you select the very best idea to bring to market. There are so many steps required to bring a product to market, but ultimately it all starts with the idea. If you have the wrong idea, then all the other steps, no matter how well you execute on them, well, they're not gonna really matter. So we're gonna count down 10 of the best ways for you to determine if you're focusing on bringing the best product idea to market. And although all 10 of these are important for your success, you should pay special attention to the last three. So number 10, it's an easy to reach market that you already know. So you wanna choose a product that has a market that's easy to reach. I know you may be thinking, everyone in the world can use my product. Their age, location, gender, occupation, or income doesn't matter, everyone will want it. And at this point, you're likely seeing dollar signs in the billions. But the truth is, a market that includes everyone will be really, really hard to reach. You're better off focusing on a niche product or at least somewhat of a niche product that has a market that you can reach. This is where the expression, the riches are in the niches come from. Ideally, you should focus on a product for a market that you already know. This can be a prior experience selling to this market or just being part of this market yourself as a consumer. You don't have to always limit yourself to prior experience, but the markets that you have worked in, ideally for many years, are going to be the ones that you know the best. Number nine is there's already some existing competition. Wait a minute, isn't competition a bad thing you may be thinking? Shouldn't I focus on developing a product that's unlike anything else on the market? Well, surprisingly, the answer to both of these questions is no. Bringing a completely unique product to market can be extremely challenging. Not only do you have to convince people that the problem your product solves even exists, but you also have to convince them that your product is the best solution to that problem. Also, with entirely new products, you don't even know for sure that there's a market for the product. But if there's a competing product that's already selling well, well, then you have proof that there really is a market for your product. That being said, you don't want too much competition, which is what we're gonna talk about in number eight. So number eight is there aren't any dominating competitors. Although, like I mentioned, some competition is definitely a good thing, too much is definitely a bad thing. If you think you're gonna compete with the likes of Amazon or Apple, you're gonna get eaten for breakfast. That's not something you ever want to try to pursue. First of all, you'll never be able to compete on price because they have massive economies of scale. Secondly, you can never compete with them from a branding or marketing standpoint. Dominant companies like Amazon, Apple, and Microsoft have reputations for literally destroying their competition. So do not compete with these big dominant players. The number seven best way for you to know if the product you're developing is a good idea is that your product must solve a known problem. Your product needs to solve a, a problem that people already know they have. It's challenging enough to educate people on why they need to purchase your solution to a problem they already know they have, but it's even harder to educate them about a problem that they don't even know they have yet. It makes it exponentially more difficult to sell your product if you have to do both. Having to make the customer aware that a problem even exists also means it's something that they've never thought of, so it's not going to be a priority for them. That makes it a very difficult sell. Instead, focus on products that solve problems people already know they have. Number six is your product needs to be differentiated, but not on price. So your product needs to be significantly different from anything that's already on the market, and you don't ever want to be in a situation where you have to compete on just price. Competing on price equates to low profit margins, which is never a good thing, especially for a young company. Instead, you need to compete on the product itself and the value that it adds and not on the price of the product. Doing so will give you much higher profit margins and allow your company to grow much faster. In order to do this, your product needs to be differentiated in some way from any other solution that's already on the market. 
this can't be just a small incremental improvement. You need to ask yourself what makes your product better than any solutions currently available on the market. Although I just said that you don't ever want to compete on price, number five is you do want to set a price that is right. Be sure to pick a product that's in a good price range. First of all, you don't want a product that has too low of a price because it will require a lot of volume to make any significant revenue. This was one of the major mistakes I made with my own product that I brought to market because it only sold from between $5 and $10, and this meant I had to sell a huge number of them to generate significant revenue and profit. On the other extreme, if your product is too expensive, you know, let's say a few thousand dollars, that will be a significant barrier to people purchasing it, especially if you're an unknown company. Instead, I'd suggest that you focus on products that are not too low in price, but also not too high in price. I would say between $20 and a few hundred dollars would be the best price range for a consumer product. Number four is there's a potential for recurring revenue. So many people will say the holy grail of business is to create recurring revenue. And recurring revenue just means that your customers pay you a fee automatically every month or every year. Most of the online services that you use are paid for on a recurring basis. If someone buys your hardware product, can you add a monthly fee to use a web service or an app that relates to your product? Finding a way for your business or product to have recurring revenue will be a huge boost for your company, especially if you ever want to seek outside professional investments. Investors love recurring revenue, and a lot of investment companies like this aspect because it makes revenue more predictable and allows a company to grow much faster. Recurring revenue is such a coveted way of making money because it's predictable. Obviously, people can cancel their subscription, but in general, you'll have a group of customers that are going to keep paying you each month, and this allows you to be able to predict how much revenue you're going to have for the following months and this just goes a long way in helping you scale up a startup. Okay, we are down to the final three, so pay special attention because these are really important. Number three is there's potential for a high profit margin. I know developing and marketing a new product can be tremendously exciting and fun, but ultimately the goal is to make money, right? This means you need to focus on a product with a high profit margin. You ideally want the suggested retail price for your product to be about four times what it costs to manufacture it. You can push this down to three times the manufacturing cost, especially if you're selling directly to consumers and not going through distributors or retail chains. But I wouldn't go any lower than that. For one thing, it becomes exceptionally difficult to grow a business with low profit margins. That being said, you can't expect to make a high profit margin when first starting. You'll be lucky if you can just break even on your first production run. Many times you'll need to sell your first several hundred units at even a loss. As your production volumes increase, so will your profit margin. For most consumer products, you need to reach volumes of 10 to 100,000 pieces before you start to make a significant profit. The higher your profit margins, the easier it will be to grow your company. Profit should never be your immediate goal, and that will come later as you scale up to higher volumes. In the early stages, focus your efforts on minimizing your development costs and not on maximizing your profit. However, you do need to have accurate estimates on what your manufacturing costs and profit margins will be once you reach these higher volumes. You just need to know up front that once you reach high enough at production levels, then you can make a significant profit. If you determine in your analysis that 25% profit is all that can ever be made, even at high production volumes, well, then you probably want to consider a different product or consider it if you can sell it at a higher sales price. Number two, the product is reasonably affordable to scale to mass manufacturing. So you want a product that's affordable to scale from the prototype stage to mass manufacturing. One major challenge of scaling a product to mass manufacturing is the cost of injection molds that are required for any custom plastic parts. So each custom piece of plastic in your product is going to require its own injection mold. For really high volume production, these molds are very expensive. A minimum cost for a mold will be around $1,500 for a simple low volume aluminum mold. 
More complex molds for high volume production can cost tens of thousands of dollars each. Although developing a product that requires a bunch of custom shaped plastic pieces can be affordable when you're just using 3D printing, it's going to become significantly more expensive to scale that when injection molding is required. For example, if your product requires 10 custom plastic parts, then you're going to need 10 separate injection molds. Each of these molds are going to cost anywhere from $1,500 up to $50,000 each, depending on the production volume and the part complexity. So you want to do everything in your power to reduce the number of molds that your project is going to need. The number one best way for you to know if you're developing the right product is the product is relatively simple and affordable to develop. The number one most important attribute of a winning product for a startup is it needs to be realistically affordable for you to develop and prototype it. Product development is much more complicated than most lay people can imagine, so you must embrace product simplicity in order to have a real shot at success. It's really critical that you try to make your product as simple as possible, especially for your first product. That way, your development cost and your time to market will both be minimized. It's important to get your product to market as fast as possible so you can begin gathering market feedback. Then you can use that feedback to potentially modify the product to meet the, what the real market demands. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to watch this video next.